What is going on guys, welcome back, in today's video I wanted to do something kind of different. A couple of days ago a friend of mine showed me a riddle with a very fascinating and complex solution. And I wanted to share this with you guys not just for fun but because the way of thinking that is required to find the solution but even to understand the solution once you hear it is a very mathematical and computer scientist type of uh, or a way of thinking you could say. And maybe you know this riddle, maybe not. Uh, I was not able to solve it myself, I can tell you that. Um, it's very complicated. I mean, the task itself is quite easy, but the solution is very complicated. Uh, understanding it, but especially finding it on your own. So the riddle or the task is the following. You are this guy here, and essentially you are in front of, um, of two ways. You have like one way going right and one way going left. And you know that one of the two ways goes to hell and one of the two ways goes to heaven. Now, you don't know which one is which one, but you have three people in front of you. This guy, this guy, and this guy. And you don't know which one is which one, but you know that one of them is always telling the truth. One of them is always lying. And one of them is sometimes telling the truth and sometimes not. You are allowed to ask two questions that can be answered with yes or no. And... Then, after asking these two questions, you need to know which way goes to hell and which way goes to heaven. This is your task. You can only ask one person at a time, so you cannot ask a question and get an answer from all three of those. You ask one of them, so you can direct your question, for example, to this one or to this one, but only to one person at a time. And this person then answers with yes or no. Then you can ask a second question. You can ask someone else. You can ask the same person doesn't matter, but you can only ask one person, you can only get a yes and no answer, yes or no answer, and after asking two questions, you need to know which way leads to hell and which way leads to heaven. This is a task, and explaining the task is quite simple, but you need to think about it to find a solution. Now, if you want, you can pause this video now and think about this. What my plan for this video is, is giving you a couple of hints over and over again, or explaining this this whole situation here from a more computer science uh, type of thinking perspective and then step by step revealing parts of the solution and explaining why it works the way it works. So if you want to solve it entirely on your own you need to pause the video right now. If you're interested in a couple of hints you can keep watching. All right so the first thing you might want to do when starting with this riddle is you might want to start labeling these three characters with letters. So one of them is the letter T for constant truth. This guy is always telling the truth. When you ask them, is the right way leading to hell? And it is, then they're going to say yes. If it isn't, they're going to say no. Then you have F for constant false. This is the constant liar. Whatever you ask this person, they're going to give you the opposite of the truth. So if you ask, is, right, um, is the right way leading to hell? And it isn't, they're going to say yes. If it is, they're going to say no. Um, and then you have the R which is for random because you have this ambiguous person that basically says yes and no sometimes randomly. So basically these are the three characters. Now the first thing, and this is already a hint, so if you don't want to hear the hint, pause here. Uh, but the first hint is essentially that this character here, this R character, is the most problematic character. Because the F is essentially just a not true, a negated true. So Basically, if you know that someone is the liar, whatever you ask them, you just have to negate it to get the truth. So it's not that much of a big deal. If you know that you're talking to a liar, or if you know that you're talking to the truthful person, this is already, you already won. The only problem is this random guy. And this random guy is a problem because whatever these two say, there is some logic behind it. So you can design logical formulas uh, to somehow get some information out of them. So you can you can try and and XOR and you can try or connections, whatever, but you cannot do that with a random person. And they give the same answer. So the random person can give the same answer as a false person or the liar and as a truthful person. So their answers are irrelevant, irrelevant and the most problematic. So the first hint is that the first question that you ask needs to be a question that moves away from the random person. It doesn't matter if you end up with a false person or with a truthful person, like with a liar or the truthful person, 
you want to go away from the random guy because with the other two, you can somehow design some logical intel intelligent question to get some information. You cannot do that with the random person because your question can be the most intelligent and most complex formula when the random person answers, the answer is irrelevant and you cannot know anything because every answer you get with the first question can be basically a random answer being generated. So the first question is actually the most complicated one because you need to, even though you don't know who you're talking to and the answer you get can be completely random, you need to find a way to somehow get away from the random person using the first question. All right, so if you want to find the first question on your own, pause the video right now because I'm going to reveal the solution. Uh, and the first question that you need to ask here is you ask the person in the middle, is the person to your right more likely to give a truthful response than the person to your left? And if they say yes, we ask the person on the left. And if they say, uh, if they say uh, no, we go to the person on the right. So basically doing the opposite of what they tell us to do. And in order to understand why this works, we need to go through all the scenarios. So let's say, for example, we have the truthful guy in the middle, and then we have the false guy on the left, and we have the random guy on the right. If we ask now the truthful guy that never lies, is the right person going, is the right person more likely to give a truthful response than the person on the left, they're going to say yes, because the random guy is more likely to give us a truthful response than the one who always lies. And because of that, yes, we go to the left, because we do the opposite of what the middle guy says. So essentially, they're saying yes, and we go left, going against the yes. Now, if it's the other way around, if we have the truthful guy in the middle and then the liar on the right and the random guy left, we're going to get a no because the liar is not more likely to give us a truthful response, uh, not more likely than the random guy, so no, and thus we go right. So in this case, it works. If we have the truthful person in the middle, we're going away from the random guy by asking this question. Now, what if we have the liar? If we have the liar and then the truthful guy on the left and the random guy on the right, is the person to your right going to give us more likely going to give us a truthful response than the person to your left? The answer is going to be yes. Why? Because he's a liar and the random guy is not more likely to give us a truthful response. And because of the yes, we go left to the truthful guy. Now, if we have the liar and the truthful guy right and the random guy left, we ask the same question. We get a no because it's a lie again. So we go to the right. Whenever we get a no, we go to the right. Whenever we get a, get a yes, we go to the left. Now, you might say, okay, this is all fine, but what if we have the random guy in the middle because the random guy is completely random, his answers are comp uh, completely irrelevant. And this is actually what you solve with this question and the corresponding action. Because if you have the random guy in the middle and TF or FT, it doesn't even matter what they say. Because your only goal for the first question, as we already talked about, is to move away from the random guy. So if, it, if he says yes, you go left. If he says no, you go right. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, if you start with a random person and you move away, you already moved away from the random person. So these scenarios work because of logic. And this is trivial because if you move away from the random guy, you moved away from the random guy. So by asking this question, is your right neighbor more likely to give a truthful response than your left neighbor? And with a yes, you move to the left and with a no, you move to the right. You're always moving away from the random guy. So the second question, you're either asking the truthful guy or the liar. All right, so if you didn't understand this first question and why it works, go back, watch it again, and then come back to this point. Now the challenge is what is the question that you ask to this uh, person that you chose? So you know, you now have someone that you're going to ask your final question to. And this person is either always going to tell the truth or always going to lie. It's not a random person, you can, uh, you can infer something from their statements, it's not a random answer generator. But you have one question to figure out which way goes to hell and which way goes to heaven. How can you do that? 
Now for this question, I don't think that it makes a lot of sense to give many hints. I think it makes more sense to just reveal the answer. So if you don't want to know the solution yet, pause the video, think about it on your own. I'm now going to reveal the final question. The question that you asked to this final person is, what would you tell me if I were to ask you if the right way goes to hell? or if the left way goes to hell, or if the right way goes to heaven, left way goes to heaven, doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that you ask in this way, what would you tell me if I were to ask you, blah, 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 whatever. Why is that important? Think about it. Let's say the right one goes to hell, and the left one goes to heaven. And you ask the truthful person, what would you tell me if I were to ask you, if the right way leads to hell. They're going to say, yes, it does. Why? Because the truthful person tells the truth, and if you ask them what the truth is, or what they would tell you if you were asking them for the truth, they're going to tell you the truth. But if you ask the liar, what would you tell me if I were to ask you if the right way leads to hell? They're also going to tell you, yes, it does. Why? Because this is, this is the mathematical part. You're negating the truth two times by asking a question like this. You're negating the truth, which is F, and then you're negating this F again into the truth. Why? Because if you just ask the liar, does the right way lead to heaven, or to hell in this case, does the right way lead to hell? They're going to say, no, it doesn't, because they're lying. But if you ask them, what would you say and they answer yes or, or no, this would be a lie because you are asking them not only is the right way leading to hell, you're asking them about their own statement. So they have to lie once because first of all, the right way does lead to hell. So they need to say it doesn't. But then you're not asking them for the statement. You're asking them what they would say. And this is what they would say. They would lie, but they cannot tell you the truth about what they would say. So they need to lie about how they would lie, if you understand what I mean. So they would tell you actually no, but you ask them what would you tell me. So if they tell you no, they would be telling the truth about what they would say. So they need to lie about this as well, and they tell, uh, tell you yes. And this is why it works. No matter which one you ask, you're always going to get the truthful answer, because truth and truth equals truth. But lying two times, negating two times, leads to the truth as well. It's the same as multiplying two numbers. 5 times 5 equals 25. But negative 5 times negative 5 also leads to 25. So plus and plus doesn't lead to negative or to, to minus. But minus times minus leads to plus. And it's the same with negating... Uh, negating and negating again. So if you negate twice, you get the truth. But if you just tell the truth twice, you don't get uh, a lie. Um, and this is this is why this works. So again, it's a quite complicated riddle. But the explanation is that the first question moves you away from the random person by just going through all these uh, scenarios, you can see that this is the case. And then it doesn't really matter if you're talking to a liar or to a truthful person, if you ask them about their own statement that they would make, they need to either tell the truth or negate twice and thus tell the truth as well. All right, so that's it for this little video today. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of content. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and...